Sean, meanwhile, has worked his way through the metallic undergrowth and found the magic box, which, with a bit of tempering, will allow them to start the engine proper. Next step, we've got to get rid of this little box, which is the immobiliser. Me and Lee have dealt with these immobilisers before, so we just cut it out, basically, and bypass the wires back into the original loom. And then hopefully we can turn it over and see if she will actually properly fire up. If it turns over on the key, we know we're getting somewhere. So. No, don't try this at home or you might just end up behind bars. Can't let you see anything. It's like a trade secret. You mustn't look down exactly what they're doing. Actually, you wouldn't want to try this at home. The average car today has several kilometres of wiring in it. So finding the right wire to cut does in fact take a fair amount of detective work. But Sean and Lee eventually work it out and the really big moment of truth is upon them. Coming up, D-Day for the mechanics as they wait to see if all their work will yield a running engine. I mean, all we've got here really now, if you look at this, it's... <laughs> It's like, just why, it looks like it sang out of the bloody London electricity board. It's Julian's turn to impress as he undertakes the biggest challenge of his career, joining a Subaru onto a Golf. But has he bitten off more than he can chew? All I've seen Julian do so far is cut, cut, and cut a little bit more. And I have seen nothing structurally go back on yet. And the big man himself, Johnny Vegas, stops by to see whether his Golf is a well-dominating rocket in the making. You wanted, right, a yeah. rocket coming out of a volcano. Yeah, I did. Um, Classic, 80s. Here it is, my son. Bye The Chop Shop is building a very special classic VW Golf volcano car for actor and comedian Johnny Vegas. I want to feel like I'm sitting on my nan's lap and she's just at nine chili peppers. <laughs> to pack in all that extra power, they've stripped everything out of a 1989 classic shaped Golf and plan to replace it with the four wheel drive running gear and 300 brake horsepower engine of a smashed up Subaru Impreza. Low mileage, I'm careful. Yeah, don't worry, it's fine. The Subaru World Rally Team's version of the car has won the World Championship six times. But the boys bought theirs without being sure if any of it would work. This ain't, this ain't a challenge, this is a life-changing experience. Now, after fighting their way through the crushed metal and wiring, they're about to find out. Right, we have the wizards over here. Freeman, Ardley and Willis. How are we doing? Good. Pretty confident, ready to start up when you are. Give it a go, my son. Sean's preparing his defence in case it all goes horribly wrong. People that don't know what they're doing, they'll just turn it over, try and turn it over. But we've gone from the start to make sure everything's right before we turn it over so we don't do any more damage. If this thing starts, this is going to save us digging even deeper in, into our budget. It's going to save us 11, 1200 pounds and a lot of time. Ready? So, now they know they've got a near-perfect engine. It's ready to come out for a tidy-up before going into the Golf. The engine's mounted on a, on a subframe, and the subframe's mounted to the car. Once that all comes down, we have the engine gearbox complete assembly all in one lump, and that's what Julian's got to mount into the new car. But how will the massive 300 brake horsepower Subaru engine measure up to the Golf's engine bay? It actually goes between the legs, um, but the legs are actually wider on the Golf than on the Subaru, which is not a bad thing because it gives you a lot of room. A lot of things really freakily line up, like the steering shaft is right really close and a few other bits. While the boys assess the fit, Libu turns up to wheel them on. He's desperate to start work on the design. Yes. i got to know what the hell is going on here, how long I'll have to wait to chop. I will phone you, excuse me, until then, go back to your the, domain. The engine is in. The engine is in. Oh, it's not that simple. But how long we have to go from here 
to the test track. Don't tell him, <laughs> whatever you tell him, he keeps you to the minute. Well, He'll be back in here. Looks like everything is falling in place. But it's not a perfect fit just yet. Not surprising, as they're transferring the engine from a four-wheel drive car into a front-wheel drive car. Right, for this, there, there isn't a transmission tunnel on this car. Uh, that's why gene has got to fit one to it. The, the reason is because this car originally was front-wheel drive. Um, that means he had a transversely mounted engine, which is the engine's here with the pulleys on this side, and the gearbox was here with the with, uh, drive shafts. So the whole engine assembly just come in here. So that's why they never needed to have a tunnel. But we do, obviously, because we're using Subaru. Basically, see this here. This big lump here, the gearbox, will be sitting under the tunnel. So Julian has to create a space for a transmission tunnel to house the four-wheel drive running gear of the Subaru. But not everyone's happy about the extent of what has to be done. It's really frustrating. Usually what I do, I, when the car comes in, I start from there, from the very first moment. I don't start at the end. Nothing is in my, in, in, in my brain. They're messing up so much. It's not just transforming, transforming a, a mechanical or engine. It's trans, transforming the whole structural thing. But what started must be finished. Matching up the major components of the Subaru running gear, like the subframe, to the Golf is no straightforward matter and is extremely important to mount them absolutely correctly. The subframe is the main front structure of the engine. It holds everything in place. What mounts onto it? It's the steering, the engine, the transmission obviously bases at the back, and we've got the cross member for that, the radiator, all the ancillaries. So this takes a hell of a lot of weight. There's no ready-made blueprint for a bespoke job like this. So the chop shop blags some special equipment to help Julian, who's in charge of merging the two cars, do all the measuring up. Using an electronic ruler and a computer database of all known production cars, the system is primarily designed to help accident damage repairers straighten bent cars into their original dimensions. As you've used the old mechanical measuring system, this is basically an electronic version. But the man in the know, Max, reckons it could be just what Julian needs to safely stick the underpinnings of the Subaru to the Golf. The measuring system works by ultrasound. You attach probes to the car which emit ultrasound and the beam that runs down the centre of the car picks up that sound. What we can do is we can put probes on the Golf and measure what the readings are from that. We can also measure the Subaru and then after we've done that we can superimpose the two together so we can actually find out exactly where the Subaru running gear needs to go on the Volkswagen body shell. You can get the Golf and Subaru data fish and conv combine them like that, and it'll tell you exactly where to mount it onto the Golf. Baffled? You're not alone. But there is a simpler explanation. If you imagine we have two boxes here uh, and they represent the vehicles, we're twisting the box around to line it up with the other one so that we know that everything is in exactly the right place. Bern is still confused. Ah. <laughs> But then, when he and Lipu first worked together in Bangladesh, they didn't even use a tape measure for this sort of job. Lipu, let me tell you something. All this modern technology, mate, when we built cars in Australia in Bangladesh, <laughs> they were so straight and used to go down the road like this. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. That's the like way you drive in Bangladesh. Don't come with that. How are you doing, George? But that's what it's ultimately all about. Mounting the Subaru running gear onto the Golf securely and in line so that they stay together and don't veer off the road. Now then. Fortunately, Julian does understand it all and wastes no time preparing to mount the Subaru's running gear into the Golf. You can see where the probe is there. It's telling me exactly my length, width and height that subframe is. Width, one millimetre out. That subframe just wants going over that way, one mil, and that can go in place. But Julian can't bolt on the Subaru running gear just yet. Obviously, it's not meant to have a subframe actually put there. It's here where it's strengthened. We're not using that no more, we're using this. So that's got to be completely strengthened all the way through there. Nicely welded up, all boxed up inside, 